just hemolysis. So you can see the hemolysis here. This is beta, alpha, and gamma, non-hemolysis. You can see the beta is really beta. Does that work for you? Yep. Okay. So now, speaking of hemolysis, oh no, you're fine. Speaking of hemolysis, um, this is the difference between staph aureus on this side and group B strep on this side. And you can see how staph aureus is a much stronger beta and it's a much stronger looking colony. It's whiter, it's more sturdy. Whereas the group B strep is kind of a little bit more wimpy looking. It's a little grayer, it's not as white, and the beta isn't as strong. So then here's the difference between group A and group B strep, and you need to get really close for this because you can see the group A strep has a, they're tiny little colonies. Can you see? Would it help if I put it down? Yeah, that's good. Where? Put it down? Yeah, try to put it down. Okay. Yeah, that's good. See, the group A has tiny little colonies, and it's got a huge beta zone around it. Whereas the group B colonies are larger, and it has a smaller beta zone around it. get the beta? Yeah. Okay. So then, <clears throat> this is an oxycillin screen auger. We use this for Staph aureus to see if it's MRSA or not. If it's uh, if there's no growth on it, it means that it um, is sensitive to penicillin, but if there's growth on it, it means that, that it's MRSA and it's resistant to penicillin. Okay. And then we have chrome augers, which turn different colors for different things. So this is a Staph chrome auger. Um, if it's Staph aureus, it will be lavender. If it's some other staph, it'll be a different color. So as you can see here, the Staph aureus is lavender. Staph saprophyticus is blue. This is uh, Proteus mirabilis, which is a <clears throat> isn't really supposed to grow, but it'll grow. It doesn't grow well, whereas the staph really grows well. And there's all kinds of different colors it'll be, but you're looking for lavender or pink for Staph aureus. And then here is. Um, this is Neisseria gonorrhea, and this is Haemophilus influenzae. Neisseria gonorrhea, as you can see, it doesn't grow very well. It's kind of wimpy, and it only grows on chocolate and um, media specific for gonorrhea, like uh, New York City or uh, Modified Thayer Martin and stuff like that. Haemophilus, Haemophilus influenzae will only grow on chocolate. Other types of Haemophilus may grow on blood as well. And then... Um, this is for fun, some anaerobes. This is Clostridium perfringens. As you can see, it only grows anaerobically, so you can have any oxygen in it, and um, it's not facultative. It's, a, <clears throat> it's an obligate anaerobe, and you can see it's really, really spready, and it beta. Can you see it? Can you try that. It's almost like swarmy, but it doesn't, yeah. it's not swarmy. It's just really super spready, yeah. and it stinks really bad. And then this is um, Bacteroides fragilis, which is another anaerobe. Yeah, that one stinks. Can you smell that? Yep. So now we're going to go for some differential stuff here. So this is the difference between a lactose fermenter and a non-lactose fermenter on um, on McConkie. Lactose fermenter will turn pink. Non-lactose fermenter will be clear. On uh, hectoan enteric, Enterobacteriaceae like Cleb and E. coli and stuff will turn it orange. Um, hectoan enteric is basically this um, to try and figure out if you have Salmonella or Shigella. It's like a stool thing. So as you can see here, this is a non-lactose fermenter. Your colonies are green, and then. On this one, you can see um, this is also a non-lactose fermenter, but it's an H2S producer, so you'll see black colonies as well. Okay, good. So then this next one is, um, this is McConkie with Sorbitol. The enterohemorrhagic E. coli, the EHEC, you know there's the ETEC for travelers. This is for enterohemorrhagic, which we test, have to test for. And the EHEC type of E. coli, which is the 0157H7, um, does not ferment sorbitol. So this is just your regular basic E. coli, and this is the 0157, the kind that causes hemorrhagic um, colitis. So that does not, um, so anytime you see anything um, clear on a McConkie auger, any type of McConkie auger, it's bad news. I mean, not bad news, but you should check it. 
So this is Campylobacter. And as you can see, I put it on chocolate because you can really see how wet and pink looking yeah. it is. And that's how you can identify that because it just looks wet and pink and cook your chicken. And then this last one here is uh, Vibrio. And this is TCBS auger, which is uh, selective for Vibrio. And you can just see their dark green, almost blue colonies. And then E. coli didn't grow because it's not going to grow. Okay.